Noel V. Marte is getting us excited out in Arizona. But how are the other Reds prospects faring in the Arizona Fall League? We're going to discuss that. We're also going to check in on uh, the progress of the Arizona Fall League as a whole. And we're going to look at the players the Reds should be looking to add to the outfield in 2023. All of that on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds. Your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction to this team and to information for you. Locked On Reds is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks as always for making us your first listen. We are free and available on all platforms. So make sure you're subscribed because we are going all off season and leading up to spring training on today's podcast, though, we are going to look at the Arizona fall league. Some guys are making some impacts out there, whether you're talking about the hitting or the pitching. We're going to look at exactly what has caught our eye and what has caught everybody's attention about the seven guys that the Reds sent to Arizona. Plus, we are going to look at some possible outfield additions that the Reds could make this off season. That's something that I feel like is going to be a big topic as the hot stove gets fired up here after the World Series. But Steve, we are going to start out in Arizona because the Reds have sent a number of top guys, a number of guys that we expect to make an impact on this club, if not next year, definitely the year after that. And we got to start with Noel V. Marte because, oh my gosh, he hit a bomb last night. He did hit a bomb last night, and uh, we got a treat for uh, the viewers on YouTube coming up here in a minute. But I think it's going to translate well to the audio feeds too. Just, uh, just it's it's gonna it's gonna bring the the sound of summer alive when we roll this in just a minute, Jeff. But Noelvi Marte not only is hitting really really well in the Arizona Fall League, but you know we talked about this when uh, the Reds announced who was going to Arizona, and and speculated is who was going to be asked to shift positions and who was going to move around. And, you know, I thought it was going to be Matt McClain to the outfield, but turns out the major move of the Arizona fall league was Noel V Marte moving from shortstop to third base, which if you listened to the locked on Mariners guys, when this trade went down initially, this is what they said was going to happen. So, you know, shout out to those guys. They had it pegged. Uh, you know, they said all along, they felt Marte, you know, profiled better as a third baseman. And, uh, it, Marte did an interview where he basically said all the right things. He's, you know, the, the, the cliche, uh, I just want to help the team win. But at the end of the day, this dude just wants to play in the major league. So if third base is where the Reds want that to happen, uh, Noel B. Marte is going to go out to third base and do his very best job to be a, an everyday starter there. Now, it's important that we note he's played a dozen games out in Arizona, so it's not as if it's been a huge sample size to glean from, but there are a couple of notes that I want to get to. But first, we got to get to this, and like you said, even the audio folks are going to enjoy this because it's a bomb. I mean, that was loud, Steve. He got all that was a barrel. That was like three barrels in one hit. Noel V. Marte, that was some fireworks out there in Glendale. You know what, Jeff? I want I want you to play it again in just a second. For for the audio listeners, uh, I want to paint a picture. Uh, the defense, nobody moves nobody when moves. this ball is hit. Nobody takes a step <laughs> anywhere. For the audio for the video folks, watch the watch the defenders this time when Jeff rolls this. Nobody moved. Nobody. No, everybody moved on stood. That one. Everybody stood straight up, and and the pitcher got whiplash. <laughs> it was great. I, I, and I tell you, I love it because it, I was looking at his performance, and up till this, it was eleven games, and really the numbers don't jump out to you as far as like power or hitting or anything like that. But the one thing that I want to note about Noel V Marte at the plate, 
is his plate discipline in these 12 games. He has a walk or strikeout to walk ratio of virtually one to one. And that's the kind of number that you don't see very often. If he can translate that, if that is something that we can see him continue to do in spring training and then eventually, you know, in triple a and things like that, as he moves through the minor leagues and hopefully we see him later on next year, we're not going to see him on opening day, but you know, maybe next year, um, that is what I'm looking for. We talked about that with Spencer steer. We talk about that with guys who we saw small sample sizes of, but there is something you can glean from and it's their plate discipline. No, absolutely. And uh, we should probably uh, mention, Jeff, that big shout out to our guy, Bobby Nightingale, mm -hmm. for uh, providing that video appreciate of Noel V yeah. uh, for the podcast. Really appreciate his willingness to share that with us. Go read Bobby's work, uh, doing great stuff covering uh, the Reds for the masses. Uh, you know, the strikeout to walk ratio is very interesting. And I think that, you know, we, we see that some of the other Reds prospects aren't doing quite as well with their, their strikeout to anything ratios out in Arizona, Jeff. Yeah. Podcast, uh, podcast favorite Reese Hines. He's shown some power. He's hit a couple of bombs. He also has 25 strikeouts and 53 at bat, Steve, like that is worrisome. That that's the kind of number that you're like, okay, how do you come down from that? It's a small sample size, but again, that's like Aristides Aquino numbers. It is. And it, it shows that, you know, he's definitely all in on, on trying to be the power guy, but a 50% strikeout ratio. I mean, listen, I'm gonna play. it's not, it, it's just not going to work. I mean, I don't, Adam Dunn wasn't even at 50%. You know what I mean? It's like, you're not going to be able you're to accomplish Adam very Dunn. much. I, I know, listen, I love me some, you know, <laughs> double beer fist in Adam Dunn, just like anybody else. But at the end of the day, that is not what the Reds need Reese Hines to be. They need him to be a home run threat, but it's not it's not the 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 be all end all. He needs to be able to shoot the ball the other way. He needs to be able to to be a situational hitter as well as a power hitter. Uh, you, you need to be able to do both things. You know, Chris and I, uh, Chris Welsh and I talked about this in the in yeah. part of our conversation over the last couple of days, where uh, you know guys are are trying to just put that lift in their swing, and uh, hopefully some of the the rules changes coming up with the elimination of the shift and and with Major League Baseball tinkering with the game will get guys to going back to being willing to to be an opposite field hitter and being an on base guy, not necessarily just living and dying by the home run. Yeah, and and one other note too about the guys at the bat. Matt McClain. And in fact, right before that home run happened, Matt McClain tripled. So Matt McClain was on third base. Whenever no LV Marte hit that bomb, uh, I, I kind of like, no, I won't play it again. I'm just kidding. But, uh, it was such a great bomb. That was a great bomb to watch. Um, but McClain with that triple, it's a little bit better. He hasn't quite had the extra base power out in Arizona, but again, he is improving in his strikeout rate. That was something that we noted whenever we talked with Tom Nichols about his season last year was that his strikeouts total did not reflect what Tom Nichols saw whenever he was in Dayton. So he wondered if he was selling out for power and he wondered if going out to Arizona and you wondered this as well, if he would kind of course correct a little bit with his hitting it looks like he has his plate discipline numbers are a little bit better not quite a one-to-one -one ratio but very very close strikeout to walk ratio of one-to-one -one. so those are the kind of numbers that you like to see the one thing that i will say is that defensively mclean and reese Hines have looked fine noel v Marte in a very small sample size has made three errors now errors in the of themselves are not a great stat but there's going to be some growing pains here with him at third Oh, absolutely. And, and to your point on, on McLean, when he joined us and uh, was on the show for a lefty in the bullpen, he said as much. He said that, you know, he was trying to find the balance between adding power to his swing and keeping his strikeouts under control. That was something he was focused on. Uh, I, I think clearly, Jeff, the one thing we can take away is that even while they're continuing to refine their game, there is a whole lot to be excited about with these hitters yes. out in Arizona. Uh, it's an exciting, uh, it's an exciting talent pool in the fall league. And each player probably needs to develop a little bit more before we can count on them to be uh, contributors to the reds at the major league level. 
You know where else the Reds need some contributors at the major league level, Jeff, is the outfield. Uh, they cannot go into 2023 yeah. as is. They absolutely cannot do that. Uh, but who exactly could the Reds acquire to help? Uh, we are going to uh, take a look at who the Reds should look at coming up in the next segment. Uh, before I tell you about who the Reds need to pick up to lock down the outfield in 2023, let's talk a little bit about how you can lock down your valuables, and that is with Simply Safe. The numbers do not lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. We know this because, uh, you know, Jeff uses Simply Safe at his home. This is how he keeps his wife out of his built bar drawer. He put one of the elements right there on that desk drawer. Every time Hannah tries to steal a built bar, bam, security system is going off. Uh, Simply Safe protects you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. Here's why we love it it's super customizable. Not a situation where you have to go out and purchase all kinds of things that you don't need, all kinds of extra equipment, and pay for all kinds of installation help and people to come into your house uh, every other month to tweak and adjust. Doesn't happen. The system integrates well into your home, and it's easy to self-install. No need to have the tech come out. No need to schedule something between the hours of 8 and whenever. Uh, you can handle it yourself. Uh, they don't have big bulky units that damage or mess up your home's design at all. Uh, you can move Simply Safe with you uh, whenever you move uh, after you install it. You can move it around. You can uh, take it with you if you change homes. The elements are easy to remove, and you can just pack them up and take them to the next spot, plug them right back in, and you are secure. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. Uh, you can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, coming up on tomorrow's podcast, we're going to continue to uh, dig through what the offseason could look like. We're going to begin our look at the players that will still be around, or at least the ones we think will still be around. And uh, maybe we'll discuss a few surprises we think might happen along the way as well. But Jeff, one of the places that uh, it shouldn't be a surprise that the Reds bring somebody in, and that is the outfield. You know, Chris Welsh and I talked a little bit about Nick Senzel uh, during our conversation over the last couple days. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, Aristides Aquino and how he has not lived up to anything. Uh, you and I have spent a lot of time talking about potential platoons uh, with the <laughs> what YouTube uh, comment section has dubbed the F troop that the Reds have <laughs> remaining on the roster with Fraley, Friedel, and Fairchild. Say that three times fast. But Jeff, what are they going to do? I mean, they got to go get somebody, right? <sighs> They definitely do, Steve, and I think that we need to set some parameters because it's not as if the Reds are going to go out and get Aaron Judge. I think we've kind of hammered that home. Wait, and for any, not? yeah, yeah, I don't think so, Steve. I think they're probably out of this running here. And honestly, if anybody thought they were in the running, may I introduce you to the last two off seasons? Anyway, that is all out the window. What I'm thinking, and, and stop me if I'm wrong, I think the Reds will likely spend somewhere between 15 to 20 million on free agents. And virtually none of them will be multi-year deals. Does that sound fair? It does. It sounds exactly on point. Yeah, and so I think that rules out a couple of people. And these are going to be people that you're going to see because we all do this. You do this. I do this. We look at the guys that are on this list and we start thinking with our like fantasy baseball brain, with our MOB the show brain. And we say, boy, the Reds could go get Brandon Nemo. Yeah, they could go get Jock Peterson. Oh, man, Andrew Benintendi, get that Madeira boy home. Bring him back. He can be in the corner outfield right now, great American. None of those guys are coming to Cincinnati. No, because you're you're uh, just to clarify, because they could go get any okay. one of those guys. Right. They will not go get no. any one of those guys. There's the the market is going to be what the market is going to be, and we know that Nick Crawl is not going to be given the freedom to play in it. Listen, this is not a Nick Crawl issue, folks. This is not uh, Nick Crawl deciding that he doesn't want to go get these guys. I bet you absolutely 
Nick Crawl wants to go get one of these guys. Uh, he's going to be given a budget number. We pretty much have a, a fairly solid idea of what that budget number is going to look like that we'll talk about coming up in the next segment. But uh, the money is not going to be there for Nick to play with. So he's going to have to get creative in what he does with this outfield. And I'm going to start it off, Jeff, because I know you've got a list of guys you want to talk about, but I'm going to tell it. you right now, it. a Tommy fam reunion. <laughs> it's going to slap, he? baby. It is going <laughs> to slap. The slap shot edition part two in great American ballpark. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a chance for a he's, lot of different reunions here. I, he's uh, not he's not signing Tommy Fan. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen again. I, I think they did what they did, and when they got a player to be named later for him, which ended up being Nick Northcutt, they were just like, thank you very much. That's it. That's We're done. But they could reunite with Tyler Aquin. Tyler Aquin's a free agent, and some think that he could go for around four or five million that would fall within their range. However, that really wouldn't fall within what they need. The reds have guys that can hit right-handed pitching in their outfield. Friedel Fraley. Those are the guys that are going to start against right-handed pitching. So you're looking at guys who can hit left-handed pitching. If you're talking about hitting that I'm looking at Adam Duvall and I'm looking at Robbie Grossman. Now, Adam Duvall, that would be an interesting reunion. Him coming back, Lucas Sims still being on the roster, be like, hey, look at that. Just took a couple of years to get our guy back. And then David Peralta also is pretty good against right-handed pitching. But there's an interesting guy that I want to talk about, Steve, because he didn't end his season last year on the greatest of terms. He had hip surgery. But if you hear over the next month or so that the Reds signed Kevin Kiermeyer. Would you be stoked? I would not be stoked. And, and, and here's okay. the thing. Um, he would have to come very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, some kind of show me deal. Because as you just said, hip surgery. Look, there's lots of injuries that you can come off of that I would not be worried about. The hip is one that I would be worried about. Uh, it impacts the ability to get around on the ball and hit Do major everything. league pitching yeah. so much. It, it's all about the legs. It's all about the hips. You hear all the time about, you know, turning your hips into, into the swing. Uh, I would not be super stoked about this deal. Now, if it's this deal, plus another one of these guys, look, I think Adam Duvall probably intrigues me the most. He yeah. enjoyed his time in Cincinnati. He can hit at great American ballpark in, in, batches uh you know he's not going to be a high average guy but you know who is a high average guy at this point none so, of these guys are um, that i listed no now. none none of these guys <laughs> are so uh, for me if if they signed if they did that signing plus one plus one of yeah. these other guys in case the injury is more significant than can be overcome then i'd be okay with that that's that's actually one of those signings that it's a great flyer it's a great come show yeah. me it's a it's a great gamble but they cannot tie up a lot of resources in a move like that and you know if you're the yankees if you're the dodgers you've got money where you can be like yeah why not let's see what happens but the reds don't have that luxury so wherever these dollars are going to go needs to be towards players that we're at least fairly certain can be impactful when they get here and that's the that's the key here because I kind of look at what the Reds are going to do. And unless they do go out and spend a majority of this, you know, perceived available budget, like we say, you know, there's no salary cap in baseball. A team can spend as much as they want, but we know that the Reds are not going to do that. They're going to spend a finite amount. So I'm thinking like they're probably looking for a dude in the mid thirties uh, that needs to prove something. And when you're talking about hip surgery for Kevin Kiermaier, yeah, that's not sexy, but. According to spot track, he was paid over 13 million last year. His market value this year is around 6 million. Now that doesn't mean that's what he's going to get. Some team might overpay or he could go for less. I don't know. That's a, that's a ballpark pun intended, uh, number there for Kevin Kiermeyer. So in the hypothetical situation, and we look at Adam Duvall, who made nine million last year, Robbie Grossman made five million, David Peralta, who I listed, also made seven million. You could couple two of these guys together and not spend the entire perceived budget that the Reds will have. Uh, that's, I mean, what did they pay Tommy Pham? Tommy Pham got like a one nine year, million. Seven, <laughs> nine million dollar deal, right? So, you know, if you can translate that same nine million dollars into two guys and a gamble. If you can, it, for $9 million, I think that's the direction that Nick Craw is probably working. And I think, I think it's realistic to say of, of this list, Jeff, you could get 
two of these guys. Maybe let's just say you could get Grossman for five million. Let's say you could get Duvall for another four. Yeah. And then maybe you throw another million plus incentives at a, a Kiermaier, and you've got three dudes now to to compete for the starting lineup versus left-handed pitching. I'd like that. And, and to be honest with you, we're not expecting. When we talk about Kevin Kiermaier, if you've watched baseball over the last decade, you know that Kevin Kiermaier is going to make some amazing plays in center field. Not expecting that. I'm not expecting him to be leaping over the wall at Great American Ballpark and robbing home runs or diving like Billy Hamilton used to do, but I'm expecting him to play a competent center field and hit around 220, 230, because his most recent years in his career have not been kind at the plate. His batting average over the last five years, I think, hasn't even eclipsed 230. So there's not a lot. We're not talking about guys that are going to set the world on fire, but platoon-wise, they will help out. And I think that the Reds need to look at that because they're not going to find that everyday guy because if they go out and they find an everyday outfielder, they're spending most, if not all, of their budget and they're not going to be able to address other areas like starting pitcher, catcher, which is almost as important as outfield in my mind, which we'll talk about that on an upcoming episode. But yeah, the, the outfield definitely needs to be addressed, and I don't think you're going to do it by signing just one guy. No, as a matter of fact, I, I, I'll i just say right now, I don't believe the 2020, 20, the 2023, that's easy for you to say, Steve, 2020, the, 2020, 2020. the 2023 roster may not have an everyday outfielder on it on opening day. It may be platoons all the way around the outfield. And, and I think I agree with you. I think we could take it so far as to say that it shouldn't have an everyday outfielder unless somebody emerges. But, you know, in the month of April, I don't think we're going to have an everyday outfielder unless somebody just loses their minds and goes completely off. But look, the Reds will make moves in the margins. And we're looking at options that they're going to pursue. We're going to be talking about that as the hot stove heats up here on the Locked On Reds podcast. But you know, Steve, as the hot stove heats up, and we, we've talked about this a little bit, but I want to get your take on this because I've got a take on it as well. What can we reasonably expect the Reds to spend on additions, whether they be trades, whether they be free agents, things like that? We're going to break that down coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, I wanted to let you know that in between shows, you can follow us on Twitter. We've got takes about baseball and other things that happen. I know football is going on right now. We're happy about the Bengals, baby. That, that win last week, that was so sweet. But we've got plenty of takes over on Twitter. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked On Reds. Also, make sure you're following us here on YouTube and you click that bell to get notified whenever we've got some new content for you. All right, Steve, we have a, an off-season coming up, and, and I don't think either one of us would be surprised if they made no moves of note, but they're making moves. The, this is not a situation where they can sand pat and just run into this next season with the current roster that they have. They're going to have to supplement some areas. And in order to do that, you got to spend that thing that Reds ownership doesn't like to spend. And that's money. Oh, absolutely. Look, you mentioned it earlier. They're not signing Aaron judge. That's not happening. There's I, as a matter of fact, Jeff, I doubt there will be a about Jacob agent. DeGrom. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Clearly, I can. I, the, you just proved that there's Bailey's in your coffee, or there's Jameson's. <laughs> whatever you're drinking out of that stormtrooper little helmet Irish, there Irish. is got a little kick to it. But no, the, they're not signing those guys. As a matter of fact, I don't think they're going to sign a free agent that will result in a press conference. Uh, there's not going to be one of those guys. It's going to be guys where there's a little transaction announcement from the at Reds team with, you know, welcome to the team and, and that kind of stuff. But that's, that's going to be what it is. They, they were roughly at $120 million in 2022, Jeff, um, not a huge payroll. I, I mean, but also some really, we've talked about miss allocated funding. Uh, they mm -hmm. spent money on some things that made absolutely no sense when they were in panic mode. And so I think those dollars are going to be the ones that are redirected. Uh, Mike Miner is not going to be on this team. They're not picking up his nor option. Should he be? <laughs> nor should he be. Those those dollars are going to be redirected. Uh, they're going to have a little bit of room to play with. Uh, I think you've got here their estimate right now. Their obligation right now is about 
89, 90 million dollars. That's with arbitration. That's with all of this, like spottrack.com is estimating that whether you're talking about and also deferred salaries too, because they're still paying King Griffey Jr. I think for one or two more, two more years, two more years. Yeah. Two, two more, more years. years. Yeah, I think so. So, but, so you figure yeah. they've got, they've, they've got $30 million. Let's, let's say realistically, Nick Carl probably has a cap of $30 million to play with. Uh, I know, you know, no salary cap in baseball, whatnot, but that's the owner imposed cap. I, I think uh, 120 million is probably the hard ceiling. So that being said, there is a little bit of money to go out and do some things we think they need to do, Jeff. Uh, we've, we've kicked it around a little bit since the season ended. They need to sign a couple bullpen arms. They need mm-hmm. to get a backup catcher and they need to address this outfield. And however they can do that configuration of thing with $30 million is probably what Nick crawl is working on the entire off season, or at least now until the winter meetings, you know, who he's looking for with that 30 million, he's looking for five or six Brandon Drury's and, and whether they be pitchers or not, I mean, you, you know, you're just talking about a guy who comes out of nowhere and just absolutely lights the world on fire because you're not going to see, and I'm going to say this all off season. And I will be very shocked. I will be very surprised. You know me. I like to take the over. And if you put the over under at one and a half years on a contract for anyone that the Reds signed this offseason, I'm taking the under because I think they're signing one year deals. I think that's it. I I didn't think you knew how to do that. Take the under. (laughs) It hurts to click that button. It really does. I guess it does. No. I, I think you're absolutely right. There, there may be a couple deals in there that maybe are like a one year with a mutual option with right. a, uh, with a pretty insignificant buyout, something like that. But yeah, there is no multi-year deal a come in for anybody because they're all in on waiting and seeing what this, this pool of prospects. I don't know why I'm trying to use all of these words today that are hard to get out when you say <laughs> fast, but this pool of prospects to develop. Nick Crawl said that already. And he said it very Nick Crawlish when he did the interview, but you know, he told the truth. They're right. in wait and see mode. And that that means they'll spend just enough money to field a team, not field a winner, not field a team that's going to knock our socks off. But listen, there's an outside shot that Nick Crawl could do this just well enough for this to be a 500 baseball team. Uh, yeah. We've talked about this, Jeff. There was a portion of the season, and granted it was before they dealt away guys like Luis Castillo, that this was a 500 baseball team. Right. So if the starting rotation is what we think it will be heading into 2023, they address this bullpen just a little bit and get guys like Lucas Sims back. Yep. This could be a 500 baseball team. Nick Crawl could stumble into a potential playoff? Playoff? <laughs> playoffs let's not contender. get that far let's not get that far I, I, playoffs I, I, jeff steve steve, steve we're steve, going steve. to the show steve you know i have the tendency to be optimistic don't do this to me in october like i can't do it i can't go all off season to be that optimistic no no, no i'm <laughs> I, i'm with you though they can make some moves they can do some things and be not as incompetent as they were this year dare i say Maybe we take the over on the season win total next year. We'll see what happens though. They got to make some moves, but there's going to be moves made because I'm with you. I think it's somewhere between 20 and 30 million that the reds will have to spend, whether that's on trades, whether that's on free agency, again, it's going to be short term guys. And like you said, and, and you mentioned the option thing. I think that we as fans are almost, um, conditioned to see options as, oh, Hey, we, we might as well consider this a two year deal. None of these options are going to be that they're going to be mutual or team options, which means when they trade them later on in the year, it looks good to the team acquiring them, especially if they are doing the Brandon Drury and just going off and having a career year and things like that, because the Padres are probably interested in keeping Brandon Drury in some capacity for next year. So overall it's all going to be signed with, okay, we need to stabilize this roster, especially early on in the season so that Ellie De La Cruz doesn't have to be, I mean, we would love it if he's on the opening day roster, but he doesn't have to be because this roster is so thin. We want to be stable and have some semblance of depth because it was very obvious, even in the middle of August, after the trade deadline was over, this roster had no depth whatsoever. 
And that's why we saw Michael Ciani. I, I love Michael Ciani. I love the minor league career that I've watched of minor, uh, Michael Ciani, but I never expected him to be a guy for the Reds. So when he got called up, I was happy for him, but that was more out of necessity than it was, okay, we're excited about our next center fielder. Yeah, it was either him or you. And I got to right. tell you, I, I'm, I, I've seen you run around that outfield and, and it's not, know, right. listen, it's like jogging. people aren't, jogging. people aren't paying, Sucked. people are not paying for tickets to watch that. That's what I'm saying. We'll just, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But you're absolutely right. There were a lot, a lot of desperation moves, Taylor Motter, that made their way onto the <laughs> roster in 2022. So no, they, they Thank have to, they have to get away from that. And listen, a big part of that was an unprecedented amount of injuries and, yeah. The Reds responded to that. They fired the majority of the the strength and conditioning and training staff. So, you know, yeah. hopefully, hopefully whatever is coming in has a program that helps the Reds stay healthy. Uh, that, I think, is the, the biggest key. It's going to be all about health because I don't even think the Dodgers and the Yankees could have overcome the amount of injuries that the Reds were, were facing in 2022. So, uh, was it a depth issue? Uh, yeah, part of it was a depth issue, but I mean, at the end of the day, when, when you've churned over your 40 man, almost one whole time, when you're heading towards your 80th guy on the 40 man, um, that talent level is going to take a significant hit. And I, I think we saw that play out live and, and in color right before our eyes in, in August and September. So, yeah, they got to get away from that, Jeff. But yeah, four signings. I expect four signings. I'm going to put yeah. it down right now. Four significant signings. contributors to the major league roster. Four of them. Two four relief signings. pitchers, two relief pitchers, a catcher, and an outfielder. I think okay. that's the realistic – that's the realistic thing that they are going to do. I'm going to say five, and I'm going to differ from you slightly. I think a reliever, a starter, a catcher, and two outfielders. I think that's what they're going to do. And I think that's okay. where we're going to end today's podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to the Lockdown Reds podcast here on a Wednesday. And uh, thanks, as always, for making us your first listen. Now go make your second listen, Lockdown Sports Today. If you want to know about the biggest news around sports, check out Locked On Sports Today because they have the biggest stories plus instant reactions and big game recaps as well as the take of the day. Locked On Sports Today is just like Locked On Reds. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Steve, coming up, we, we, we've got to talk about this catcher position because there's questions about Tyler Stevenson. I loved what you and Chris Welsh got to discuss. We're going to kind of rehash that a little bit plus look at some options to join him because, well, pretty much everybody that we saw play catcher last year is no longer on the roster. <laughs> but with that, what can people expect from you and me? Well, they can expect you and I to stay dialed in on the transaction wire. They can expect us to stay dialed in on the Arizona Fall League. They can expect us to stay dialed in on all of the winter links. I'm looking at you, Ellie De La Cruz, player of the week in the Dominican. Because we are going to be locked on Reds every single day.